So this here is a video on how to paint the obliterators from the Shadow Spear set. So this is what they look like when they're finished. And I, if you stay tuned, you'll see a video on exactly how to get to this from your basic gray. So if you like what you see, just keep watching and we'll show you how we got here. So we're going to continue painting our models from Shadow Spear. And what we're working on now are the two big obliterators that are in the box. So, as you can see, I've assembled them, but I haven't quite finished them. Now, I wanted to paint the heads inside. And in order to paint the heads inside, once you're going to put the front piece on, it's going to make it very, very hard to, to get at the details there. So, much like when we do Hellbrutes, I left the front piece off. That way I can paint the detail I want on here, and then we'll cover it up, and then we'll do the rest of it. So, I did that for him. On this fella here, I did the same thing. The only problem here is when you build him, the arm connects over this front piece here. And this little tiny divot slides in behind. So I couldn't put the arm on until we put this piece on, and I didn't want to put this piece on until we paint it. So in this case, we have a mostly assembled set of obliterators. We're going to paint the heads inside. We're going to paint the tiny details around the opening so we don't hit the heads inside when we're going to paint these. We'll do it now, and then we'll re-finish assemble them and do the rest of the models. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with some Retributor armor. We'll slowly collect our paint colors there. And what we're going to do is a little bit of detail on the helmets. There's just going to be a little bit of a trim there. So, so we're going to do that, we're going to do the other head, and we're going to do the openings all around the two front pieces. And then we'll meet back here. It may have been worthwhile to mention earlier that we had primed the mi miniatures with Corax White, just so that that's recorded. As you can see now, our Retributor armor is finished. So we did all the trim, both on the heads and then on the rest of the, the armor on both units, on both models. So now what we're going to do is all of the wires that run into the back here out of the head. And we can't get the other side, but we'll try. And then same with this head here. So we're going to do all of those with lead belcher. So we'll do those now. We'll meet back here. So we've done the wires. I also took a, a few minutes just to do some of the guns and things like that that are around some of the pistons and things. What we're going to do now is take a little bit of Mephiston Red and track over just a couple of the wires just to sort of give a little bit more variability to what's there. So we'll do a few of them scattering here and there between both between both uh, units. We're also going to do the cloak on uh, this front piece as well. So we'll meet back here. So now we've got our Mephiston Red sorted out. We've done the cloak at the bottom of this chest piece as well as several of the little wires. I'm going to add a little bit of blue. So I'm just going to take some Temple Guard blue. Any blue you happen to have lying around will work. And I'm just going to do a couple more of the wires with blue in both heads. Um, and then we'll move on from there. So now that we've done this little bit of blue trace in there, what we're going to do now is probably do the fleshy bits. Um, because we're going to have to wash the gold before we can do the black. And I don't want to wash anything until the, all the base are down. So what we're going to do here is start with a base coat of Rack Earth Flesh. And we're going to do all the fleshy bits. So we'll do those and we'll meet right back. So now that our Rack Earth Flesh layer is done, as you can see here, we've done the fleshy bits on the top, both shoulders, both legs, the feet on this unit, whereas that unit actually has uh, metallic feet. 
and then the shoulders on that one as well. We're ready to add another layer to the fleshy bits. And what we're going to do is take some screaming skull and we're going to dry brush it on all the highlights on all of the legs, the shoulders and things like that, the arms here. Be mindful not to dry brush over this wire because we're going to want that to be a little bit darker according to the box art. Um, this is all swollen, swollen flesh that's being pulled apart. So when we shade this, we're going to want this to remain dark. But we're going to highlight all the rest of it except for these two shoulders. Um, so all this other stuff here will get done with Screaming Skull. So we'll do that now and then we'll see what it looks like. So now that we're finished with our Screaming Skull, you can see that we've managed to highlight all of the high points here, as well as the shoulders, the feet. You'll also notice that there is a distinct color difference between the shoulder pit here as well as the, the top area. We left that the normal Rackart flesh color and then we've Screaming Skulled the, the deeper layer here. So now what we're ready for is we're ready for a shade layer of Carsberg Crimson. And we're going to put that over all of our fleshy bits. And it may take two or three coats, but we're going to want to really coat the, the upper area here. I'll put a couple of coats of that there. I'll get it all and try to move some into the area, into the into the grooves and such. So we'll do that and then we'll meet back here. So at this point we're finished our Carsberg shade. And as you can see, we've done lighter areas here and on the legs. But as you come around the back, I've really darkened up the two shoulder pads here. And then same with this one here. We really wanted to show that the back end getting a, a lot redder. So that's still wet. So we can't really do much with that till it dries. So what we can do is we can work on this tabard here. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit of Drucci Violet shade and we're just gonna shade in over that Mephiston red. We'll just add a little bit of depth there. Pushing it right into the corners. And once that dries, we'll add some highlights. Now that our Carsberg Crimson shade has dried on this, what we're going to do is take a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet and just start highlighting that back up. I'll take a little bit of dry brush of that. Just like so, just to bring out a little bit more depth onto that there. Carrying on with our shading now, what we're going to do is approach this gold that we've been sitting on. And we're going to use a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade. And we're just going to shade all of the Retributor armor, especially the face. Doesn't matter if you make a mess because we have a highlight layer on the fleshy bits and we have the black trim still left to do. That said, try not to make too big of a mess and we'll meet back here. So now that our Agrax Earth Shade is dry and as you can see now our gold layer is very well um, demarcated. You can see all the details that we want. What we're going to do now is dry brush on some Liberator Gold just to light that back up. Just like so. Try to get all the areas that are getting covered by all the stain. We'll clean the rest up with the black in a moment, but we're going to do that and we're going to do all the gold and meet back here after. Now that our gold is finished, 
and the Liberator Gold um, is done on all the surfaces. What we're going to do now is finish the fleshy bits. So we're going to dry up, brush a little bit of Pallid Witch Fush. And we're going to put it on the high points of the legs and arms and other parts like that. Just to light that back up a little bit. Now that we've got our tinge of red in there. So I'm going to keep doing that and then we'll meet back here afterwards. So now that's finished, what we're going to do is start on the metal. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of Nuln Oil and we're going to shade all of the parts that we had originally colored with the lead belcher. So just like that, just to get a bit more detail there. We're going to do that and then we'll be back in a few minutes. So now that our Nuln Oil shade is done, what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of Iron Breaker on and that's going to brighten the metal back up the same way we've already brightened the gold back up like so. We're just going to lightly brush that on where all our metal is. like so just to brighten that up and give us another tone there so we're going to do that for all the metal we have and we'll meet back here so now we've got our metal base coated shaded and highlighted our gold base coated shaded light shaded and highlighted and our fleshy bits base coated shaded and highlighted what we're going to do now is move on to the black base so it's now time to take a little bit of our Abbott on black and on all of our pieces. And as you can see, what we're going to paint is already well demarcated because of the Agrax Earth shade we had did before we did the gold layer. And all we're going to do is color in between the lines. Now it's a base coat layer but it's black and we want it very dark so you, this may take two coats so we're going to do that now and then we'll meet back here and uh, move on from there so now that we've got our Abaddon black finished you can see both models are here and we've done the front and backs of each of them one of them has uh, black feet one of them has normal fleshy feet so what we're going to do now is because that black is really 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 dark is that we're going to take a little bit of Eschen Gray and we're going to start doing an edge highlight all around the edges all around the edges of each of these panels that are meeting each other trying to light those back up so that's what we're going to do now and then we will be back so now that our Eschen Gray highlight is finished we have a few more little things to do the first thing we're going to do is take our Screamer Pink, I'm going to go through all of the gums and teeth of the mouth that we have here, as you can see. We're also going to do the other mouth around here, and then we're going to do all of the wiring that goes all along both units, because we're going to want to set them out as well mindful that there's a couple that are up and inside the shoulders as well. So we're going to do those and then we will meet back here. So now we've got our Screamer Pink finished and as you can see 
we've done all of the cording and all of the cabling that runs all behind both of the miniatures here so there's some metal parts on that that we tried our best to leave empty right here so what we're going to do is fill those in with lead belcher same as we did before and then that'll show the metal wearing through while we're at it as well we're going to take a little bit of balthazar gold which is a bronze base and we're going to do each of these bottles up here and then we're also going to do this ring right here at the end of the chain gun so we'll do both of those we'll meet back here again so with all of our cabling done and we brought out all of those bare spots throughout all the cabling all through all of the models we're going to allow that to dry we also did the brass on the top as well as the barrel of this gun here so now what we're going to do is take a little bit of zandri dust and we're going to start going through the toenails here as well as all of the individual teeth on the mouth and any of these horns that are sticking up here and there and here and there's a few that broke through the shoulder piece over here so we're going to do all that now and meet back here again now that we've finished our zandri dust what we're going to do is take a little bit of newel oil and go over all of those metallic parts just shading them in to get a little bit more detail there so we'll do that now and we'll be right back again so while we're waiting for our newel oil to dry what we're going to do now is work on the plasma gun or at least start that so that's going to involve a little bit of cabalite green but really any dark green will do and what you want to do is go over just the plasma gun area there so we're going to do that now while we're waiting as you can see we've got the green sorted there we're just leaving that dry in the meanwhile we'll go back to some of the other stuff we were doing the agrax earth shade that we've got here we're going to use in two places we're going to shade everything we did with Zandri dust so that is the horns as well as the teeth as well as the other horns as well as the little skull that's here as well as the two skulls here so all of the things that we did with bone we're going to shade agrax earth shade we're also going to shade everything that we did with balthazar gold so that's the tubes on the top as well as the front piece of this weapon here so all of that stuff as well as the front in front of the meltas we're going to do all that with agrax earth shade all at the same time and then we'll meet back here afterwards so now that we've got our agrax done and we're just going to leave that dry there are two other points that we should point out and they are the small tentacle that's going on back here as well as the one on the front piece right here so those were hit when we did the screamer pink earlier we're going to shade those with some druchy violet and darken them up and get some detail on those now we're also going to while we're shading again take a little bit of noon oil and shade in the plasma coil that we were doing earlier and we want to do our best to get those lines nice and visible because we're going to highlight them in a few minutes Another thing we're going to do now while we're waiting for everything to dry is to take a little tiny bit on the fist and red and a very, very fine detail brush. And we're going to put in the eyes. Just 
just like that. And now what we're going to do is take a little bit of Screaming Skull, which we've used before. And we're going to put the final highlight on the teeth. well as all the skulls and everything else around the models that we did with Xandry Dust and then the Agrax Earthshade. So we'll do all that, we'll meet back here. So with both the eyes finished on the models inside, in the head, and the teeth finished on the outside, there's nothing stopping us from reassembling the models now that the, the faces is done. So what we're going to do is put the models together fully and just finish the assembly there. So now that they're glued together, you're going to find that there's a few touch-ups that you need. Uh, any place where the glue squirted out, you're going to see a discoloration. So once the glue's fully dry, we're going to hit there. As well, back here where the two cords met, of course, there was a, there's going to be a little bit of a mess there. But aside from that, in most cases, they look pretty well aligned. So same with this one here. So we'll allow the glue to fully dry before we finish our steps. So we're also going to take a little bit of Reekland Flesh Shade now. And we're going to shade in this gold gun here. Just because we want it to have a burned appearance as it's been fired. As it is a flamer. Something like that. And this one might take two coats. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little tiny bit of Iron Breaker. And what we're going to do is just highlight out all of the areas. We're going to highlight all of these areas right here. Just to lighten them up. And we'll also touch up any metal around that we may have missed along the way. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little tiny bit of Moot Green and we're going to roll along the plasma coils one at a time. So with the Moot Green, I also took the time to fill in these little canisters that are on the back here that we had previously did with bronze. And then we finish the lines on the plasma gun. What we do now is take a little tiny bit of white scar and with a very fine detail brush, we're just going to do the very corners. We're going to work on the Eye of Horus on each model. So it's going to start with Troll Slayer Orange. Just take a tiny bit and color in this oval right here. As well as the one over here. finish our Trove Slayer Orange, we're just going to take a little bit of Uriel Yellow and with our fine detail brush, we're going to put the center on that Eye of Horus right there, just like so. We're going to do the other one as well as one, two, three, and four eyes that are on this one here. Okay, so our Uriel Yellow ends up looking just like this once all the four eyes are done, as well as the other 
file for us there. So now what we're going to do is take a little bit of Abaddon Black, and we're just going to put the pupils in the center of the eyes, as well as the Eye of Horus. While we're at it, we're going to do the entire base over again in black because we did cover it up when we primed our model. And we're going to dry brush a layer of Dawnstone just on this stone here, just to offset it from the base. So we're going to do those three things, and then we'll be right back here. So now, as you can see, we're finished with the Abaddon Black. We've done the Eyes of Horus. We've done the base. And then we dry brush the Dawn Stone on this stone here to make um, make it stand out a little bit from the base. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to take just this little bit of pink horror and the two tentacles that we had pointed out earlier. This one here and that one there. We're going to do a dry brush of pink horror over those just to make them stand out a little bit as well. And then we'll move on from there. So at this point our two units are finished. What we're going to do now is base the uh, is coat the base with sand, and then clear coat the two of them, and then uh, we should be pretty much finished. So we'll do that now, and we'll meet back here. And here you can see the finished models. So as you can see, they look pretty good. I'm hoping yours turned out very similar. The backs of them are there, and as you can see, the color change looks really nice on the back. So hopefully yours turned out as good, and if you like this video, and you found it helpful, feel free to like the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, leave a comment if you really feel up to it, and we'll be back again, because we just got some new stuff released this weekend, and I'm very excited to paint it. So, we'll see you the next time you're in.